welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending June 23, 2023. I'm Sophie Antal Gibert, and I'm joined today by Paul Eidelman, our Chief Investment Strategist for North America. Hello, Paul. It's great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too, Sophie. Excellent. Well, I trust that you are doing well, maybe almost as well as some of the updates that you're going to provide us today. <laughs> it's only going to be good news today, right? Yeah, great news. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. Um, I am hoping, I made you promise that before I told you what topics we were going to cover. <laughs> um, so first off, I'm hoping that you can give us some insight into the Bank of England. They had a bit of a rate hike there today. Um, sounds like maybe took markets a little bit by surprise, but would love to get your take on that. Yeah. Um, second, I would love to touch on um, China and China growth at the moment and how that is stacking up relative to expectations. And then lastly, if we could touch on global equity markets, how they fared year to date and also this week. Sound good? Yep, it does. All right. So remember, good news only. Uh. Starting off, <laughs> Bank of England has um, just hiked rates. What is your take on that and where should we be focusing at the moment? Yeah, so the Bank of England surprised investors a bit. They hiked rates by a half a point. The consensus was only looking for a quarter point of a hike. And really, that hawkish surprise was driven by the UK inflation experience. Their numbers continue to come in really high on a headline basis, almost 9% um, inflation. So they haven't seen the same sort of deceleration in the inflation data as we have in the United States. So their policy rate is now up uh, at 5% more or less right where the Fed is. So it seems like central banks are competing with each other in terms of how high they can um, take interest rates uh, right now. Um, my colleagues in, in London think maybe the Bank of England's going a little bit too far here in, in terms of a restrictive monetary policy, and this might be sort of stepping into mistake territory. Um, there could be some pretty meaningful growth headwinds onto the UK economy from just how high these interest rates are now. And one of the things that's kind of different about the UK is their mortgage market structure is different than the United States. Most people borrow for their homes on two to five year fixed mortgages, whereas in the United States, we use 30 year fixed mortgages. That's actually quite important when interest rates go up a lot in the short term. Some people living in a home might have to refinance their loans at much higher interest rates than what they see now. And uh, Van Lu, who put out a, a research note on the Bank of England decision today, said that could equate to about £3,000 per month for some people in 2024. And that obviously dramatically changes the, the calculus for a lot of households' finances. So uh, the team there is thinking this could uh, really elevate UK recession risks. With those UK gilt yields, the government bond yields now being quite high, well north of 4%, they're actually thinking that's increasingly an attractive investment, a good yield and, and opportunity uh, for UK investors. But yeah, certainly a bit of a hawkish surprise. Um, today yeah. from the Bank of England. Sounds like it. Moving on from England, we're going to travel over to China. Yeah. Um, how are things looking there right now? Everybody's been very focused on, you know, sort of growth projections there and what is actually materializing. What's the status? Yeah, there's been a lot of contours for the Chinese economy here over the last six to nine months. They were more or less locked down due to all of the COVID concerns in late 2022. They've now reopened. So we saw a really strong growth impulse uh, into the first quarter of this year from the Chinese economy, but it's started to fizzle out a little bit. And um, Alex Kuzli, who's our, our strategist in the Asia Pacific region, I think has done a really nice job um, talking about the, the Chinese economy this year. He, he expressed some skepticism around the vigorousness of how much uh, economic growth China would have because. Uh, while they have this sort of reopening dynamic, which is positive, they didn't do as much sort of fiscal stimulus, uh, checks to households, et cetera, that uh, we did in the United States or that Europe did, for example. And so I think that sort of weakened uh, the growth impulse, if you will. Uh, it's also the case that a lot of Chinese stimulus comes from local governments selling land. And due to the property sector challenges, that hasn't been as big of a tailwind, I think, as some people might have thought. And so we saw expectations get pretty upbeat around uh, the reopening news. Uh, the data has come in a little bit softer than that, even though it's positive. And so we're in a little bit of a downgrade cycle here. Uh, Alex still thinks China will grow at something like 5% in real GDP growth terms this year and still feels pretty good about that. The consensus got 
more optimistic and seems to be coming back down a little bit closer to our view now. So we still feel pretty good about our expectations. Excellent. Thank you. And how about um, equity markets? This year has been pretty positive. This week seems like we maybe have taken a little bit of a pause. Yeah. Um, where, where, What has caught your eye? Where are you paying attention at the moment? Yeah, so a very strong year to date in 2023 globally. I think the S&P 500 index is up around 15%, which is surprisingly strong. Uh, global equities, as measured by the MSCI All Country World Index, are up roughly 12%. So good um, everywhere. Certainly, it's been a bit of a narrow market uh, in the United States, where uh, through the end of May, the top seven stocks uh, drove over 95% of the year-to-date results on the Russell 1000 Index, which is just remarkably Concentrated. narrow. Concentrated, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's some fundamentals to that around possible benefits from artificial intelligence advancements. Um, but there's also been a sentiment shift here as well. Uh, if flip back to 2022, one of the things we were talking about is it seemed like a lot of other investors were panicked about the opportunity set in equities. There was concern about recession risk. Uh, equities were down a lot. We actually thought that was a, a positive offsetting signal to some of those uh, cyclical concerns. Today, uh, market sentiment looks a bit more upbeat. Um, and so it's possible what we're seeing this week is just a little bit of a, a deflation of that balloon. The numbers aren't big, but the S&P 500 index through Thursday is down about a percent. Due to some of those challenges in China, we're seeing the MSCI Emerging Market Index down about 3%, but still uh, strong uh, globally so far this year. Excellent. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, Paul. But thank you so much for your insights and sure. for taking the time to be with us. And thank you for joining us. We will see you again soon. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.